Sean Witherspoon has been the rising star of streetwear in the last five years. Whether it's Nike, Adidas, Asics, Lacoste, Guess, or even Vespa and Porsche, everybody wants to work with that guy. Brands really do consider him a huge piece in streetwear culture, and Sean's design vision is very popular among brands, especially Adidas, since they made him the star designer of the moment. When Nike was looking into Virgil Abloh's vision to help popularize pairs, Adidas did the same with Sean, and this year they have the desire to help push pairs like the Orchitro, Gazelle, or Samba, and they obviously count on Sean among a few others to give a boost to these models. I mean, that is the basic idea, but the excitement of these brands around Sean Weatherspoon is quite far from being shared by consumers, since most of his creations do tend to flop. Alright, let's not even lie here. In reality, on all of the collabs he has been able to offer Adidas since his arrival two years ago, absolutely all of them ended up in the outlets sold at 50% off. So, the question we ask ourselves is, why do brands invest so much into this guy? Why did Adidas hire a star designer to fill their outlets? Because apparently, the goal of this type of a collab is rather to create hype and sell more expensive products. But here, it's the complete opposite that's happening, and we want wonder if we're not dealing with one of the biggest frauds in the history of streetwear. This is a new video and we absolutely have to talk about Sean Wotherspoon, the new face of Adidas hype streetwear. When we think of him, we tend to also think of other leading designers like Virgil, Kanye, or even Salahi Bembry. These stars have, or had, free reign with brands and we can totally see it because their products dominated the hype B scene. But with Sean, we're more so talking about a one hit wonder, where he built his entire career and opportunities on the back of a single design, his hybrid of the Air Max one and 97 which by the way he didn't even make himself what do you mean by that but to understand how he got to where he is, we need to put some extra context around this guy. So let me tell you how Sean went from a simple thrift store owner to a reference in streetwear design. It actually all started not so long ago in 2013 when Sean decided to open up a vintage clothing store with two of his friends. They had a selection of clothes from the 80s and 90s as well as some more recent items, but it was mostly geared towards the sneakerheads. So they also resold sneakers. However, at the beginning of the shop, they were way ahead of the arrival of the fully hyped up sneakerheads. So there were no Yeezys and at the time they were selling mostly beat up Harachis. In 2015 they began sharing their adventures on YouTube and beyond just sharing their passion, their goal was also to gain some recognition and promote their physical and online store. And that sauce caught on quickly. The atmosphere, humor, and format of their videos were right in line with what was popping at the time. Sean being more or less the main character of the vlogs, naturally he became the face of the round two shop. And after two years of being on YouTube, Sean began to make a name for himself in the American sneaker and streetwear scene. Although for most people, he was just a somewhat well-known YouTuber. People mostly knew him because he enjoyed sabotaging hyped up sneakers by dipping them in paint or cutting up Yeezys just to make caps. He wasn't on the level of a big time YouTuber like Harrison Neville or Quaz Omar, but he had his own small following. And his shop was doing pretty well since it had one of the most sought after collections of vintage clothing in the US. Not bad, not bad. His success was already enormous, but at the time, he hadn't even realized that just a few months later, him and Nike would create the most popular pair of sneakers of the year. In 2017, for the 30th anniversary of the Air Max, Nike selected 12 creative people from around the world just to imagine their own Air Max designs. And it's not entirely clear how or why they even made these choices, but in that list was Artemi Lebedev, a Russian designer who you've probably never heard of, who proposed a hybrid design between Air Max 97s and a Vapor Max. Alexandra Hackett, an English upcycling artist who now works for Nike and whose creations you've probably seen on Instagram, she attempted a somewhat messy design by mixing all the panels of different Air Max models onto a single one pair. Benjamin Adin, a Turkish designer who founded a brand called Les Benjamins, who also gave us a mix of Vapor Max and Air Max 97s. And there was also Clement Bellavin, who came from the Netherlands and now works for Mita. His concept was a fairly basic Air Max 90 in terms of the color, with an Air Max 97 sole. Anyway, we won't even go through all 12, but you get the idea. There was a great number 
number of creators, and among them was Sean Weatherspoon. He, on the other hand, had absolutely zero background in design. But to create his pair, he called upon a group of his friends who he felt was capable of giving their opinions on sneakers. Even though he had more or less an idea of the direction the design was going to take before even consulting with his team, when you watch the video of the creation process, you can see that it was really a design that was created as a full team. From the proposals for material and color choices from his friends to the person who was drawing the pair live just to get feedback from more than 10 people. It was representative of his initial vision, which was very 90s vintage in the vegan and natural vibe. But we can't even deny that the trajectory was created by the group, which certainly allowed for a design that was way more refined than it would have been if Sean would have did it by himself. But above all, way more refined than the designs of the other 11 contenders. Besides the proposals that were somewhat questionable, those that were a bit too extravagant in terms of shape, materials, or colors, the debate really revolved around three concepts. There was Clement's pair, which was actually just quite basic. I mean, did we really need a design contest to get a black Air Max 90 with a 97 sole? Man, I'm so glad they did not choose that one. And there was also Lebedev's pair, which was in the lead for a very long time and would have probably won if Sean wasn't so popular. Well, at least that's what most of the comments said after Sean was announced as the winner, since it was a contest where the winner was chosen by the public votes. Sean was a well-known YouTuber and the owner of one of the most popular thrift stores in the United States where people could vote on site with a voting machine. And for many, the results was fraudulent. And this design contest quickly became a popular contest as usual. And look, I don't even really need to tell you that before becoming the super hype pair that it is now, the majority of people found it a shame and thought it did not deserve to win. And the reason for this hate towards the pair is quite simple. It was already quite personal, with some skeletons in the closet and a handful of haters. In reality, many people were more upset with Sean than they were with his pair. And also, the color blocking was different in the concept. The colors were all faded and they were completely dull above it all. And we're quite well placed to know it since we also design sneakers. Most people just can't properly visualize concept. Now that you've seen the pair many times, this mock-up made on Photoshop probably doesn't even shock you anymore. And you may even approve of it. But if it was shown to you six years ago before the pair really existed, trust me, you wouldn't have gave it the same reception. This bad buzz wouldn't prevent the pair from being a success when it released though. It even became one of the most popular Amexes of all time. And this experience, which was supposed to be exceptional, will be the trigger for Sean. He wanted to continue creating and sharing his vision of streetwear and sneakers. And he teased us with a few other Air Max pairs he worked on with Nike that would have hyped the sneaker game up. But it will never be released as Sean said he cut all ties with the swoosh despite the love that he has for it. And he even made a very strange statement during a podcast before working with Nike where he literally said if Nike would shit on him, he would always still back them up. No, I hate it. I just don't fuck with Adidas at all. It's not my thing. I have absolutely no history with them. Like, no nostalgic feeling for Adidas. I, I don't so know. you're all Nike, everything brand loyal. Yeah, yeah, I'm Nike all day. Whether and I told Nike in a meeting. We we're actually in a meeting a couple of days ago. I told them I'm like, you guys could take a shit in my mouth. You could you could lay me down and shit in my mouth, and I would still wear your fucking sneakers. I just like Nike. Wow, man. Uh... Damn. Okay, so it does turn out that Sean has a little bit more pride after all. Considering the fact Nike hasn't shit on him just yet, he still stopped wearing their sneakers out in public though. He's also a little bit of a hypocrite now because he's mainly working with Adidas and suddenly he has these childhood memories associated with the brand. Now he claims that he used to wear the Sambas when he played soccer. Well, well, well. Well, well, well. Well, well, well. But way before he ended up with Adidas, he tried a lot of other things by working with Guess, with who he created a very colorful collection inspired by the brand's archives. He was supposed to have released a pair of shoes too, but I have no idea if they actually came out. They probably weren't any better than the Walmart Shack shoes. He's also created pieces for Lacoste that never came out. And let's not lie, it's not necessarily a bad thing. He had the chance to create another pair with a real sneaker brand 
Duran, this time in collaboration with ASICS and Atmos, and the pair was more or less a remix of the runny fag, gel light threes, and his first Air Maxis. And even though the recipe was pretty much the same, the hype wasn't necessarily as strong as the first time around, and it marked the beginning of Sean's decline, where hype beast and sneakerheads were paying less attention to him. But strangely, brands were becoming more interested in him, so he eventually joined Adidas, with who he seems to have an exclusive contract with since he's not doing any more collabs with other brands at the moment. He first revisited the superstar and then moved on to other models that absolutely nobody cared about, like the ZX8000s, Adidas EQT93s, and the Super Turf. And even though all these pairs were big flops, Adidas never stopped believing in Sean, and they even continued their collaboration with his Orcatros released in January 2023. He also teased us with the Gazelle for this year, and even though they are not necessarily designs that people are crazy about, with only 19% of people buying the pair when it first leaked a few months ago, the score increased to up to 30% the week that the pair was released. However, it is clear that it's far from being a success for Adidas and Sean, even though it's their best design in collaboration this far. In his defense, the creations of Sean don't make it because he ends up working on silhouettes that are not necessarily popular. He has a vision heavily inspired by what was done in the 80s and 90s with very colorful and extravagant pieces, with colors that don't really match by the way, whereas people tend to prefer classic designs with simple yet effective colors. If you look at the pairs that have been the most popular in recent years, it's the Dark Mocha, the Dunk Panda, or the Military Black, and you quickly realize that the standards are far from those that Sean has created. But if brands continue to give him all of this praise, we're going to continue to see crazy things where he even redesigned Porsches and Vespas with random colors. It is certainly also because of what he's supposed to represent. Sean is often presented with this image of nature, vegan, and eco-friendly, and these are values that brands want to associate with him. We even have Beyond Meat, a vegan steak brand that associates with Sean to create his clothing line. It makes absolutely no sense. He built his empire with his Air Max, and for the rest, we saw it for what it was worth. For me, he's obviously a guy who had a very favorable conjuncture, and by a fortunate chain of events, became one of the most famous streetwear designers of his moment. So well done to him. If you look at his first collaborations or his attempt at collaborations, you can feel that he wasn't particularly talented or that he had a very advanced vision. And that's normal. It wasn't his job originally. He was just a guy who liked sneakers and who through his job as a clothing seller had a fairly broad vision of what he could do in the clothing world. And today he has obviously gained a lot of competence and he is totally legit enough to create pieces. Nobody really looks into his work, but if you dive into it a little bit, there are some really interesting things like his EQT Support 93s, which is full of details and a play on materials. It's a silhouette that doesn't appeal to everyone, and I understand that nobody wears it, but it really is a nicely thought out design object. It's also quite obvious that what inspires him is Nike, and I can guarantee you that he would have had a hundred times more hype if he could work on those Dunk SBs. So why didn't he stay with Nike? Well, hey, we don't really know why. Apparently, it's a story of contract disagreements and conditions that were a little too strict, which may have made him feel not so respected enough as a designer by the brand. He says there were no clashes between them and that they just completely went their separate ways. In any case, we can only congratulate him for the crazy path that he took. But what do you think of Sean Witherspoon? Is he really a top designer who can sit at the table with Virgil Abloh, Kanye West, or Salahi Benberry? Right.